This week we're going to talk about something that has been um, a real interest of mine. It's called entomophagy. And that's probably a new word for you, but it's simply insect eating. And when we look at the world population, about 100% of humans eat insects. Now, only 80% of them do it on purpose. But those populations do it for a variety of reasons. And in Western culture, um, we tend to make value judgments about insect eating or the, the use of any kind of um, unusual food. Um, and so I really encourage you to suspend those beliefs or those judgments um, as we learn about this because entomophagy has some distinctive benefits um, nutritionally, also environmentally. And when we look at populations using insects as part of their dietary um, tradition, um, they've been doing it for a really long period of time. And it has cultural connections for them. It has culinary connections. Um, and I really want you to kind of take this opportunity to learn about these. Um, I've seen some of this in my travels. And one of the things that people often ask me when I talk about entomophagy um, is, do you eat insects? And no, <laughs> I don't eat insects. It's not something I'm particularly interested in. Um, but I didn't grow up with it. So, you know, if we were to go to some other cultures and say, well, would you like a hamburger? Or would you like blue cheese? They would say, no, that sounds horrible. That's not something I've ever had or something I had growing up. And it doesn't sound good to them either. So often within each culture, we see people gravitating towards foods they've had throughout their childhood or that are often used in that cultural norm. Insects in the US are not something that people often seek out. You may find them in some high-end restaurants, um, especially in the Hudson Valley of New York. You see people um, using crickets on menus and uh, sometimes ants and termites, but that's a very, very small you know, segment of the restaurant market. So a couple of things I want you to learn from this module. Um, I use this word entomophagy already, and then we're going to learn about something called bioprospecting. And this is something typically done um, by women and young girls, and, and there are advantages for those populations doing this because they can earn a little bit of money. They go out into um, their environment um, and they may pick um, mopani worms off of you know, different kinds of shrubs in Africa, or they may be going to termite mounds, or whatever kinds of insects are going to be harvesting from the environment. You may have also heard about the term bioprospecting when we're looking for um, different kinds of plants. And this is something the pharmaceutical industry does as well. They go into the Amazon rainforest and they will find different kinds of plants. And that's another form of bioprospecting. Um, and I've already mentioned, I just put it on the slide as well as in my introduction, about suspending beliefs. Um, because probably even my gut reaction when I was learning about entomophagy um, in graduate school was to say, oh, that sounds a little, um, you know, hard to swallow, so to speak. And so again, kind of set that aside and let's learn about it and then we can see how it fits into our own practices. Now, throughout this lab, one of the things that I'm going to be looking for you to do is gain some perspective and some information about the types of insects that are commonly eaten. So I've mentioned um, ants and termites. Um, crickets are also very popular throughout the world. Different kinds of um, larvae, so it could be ant larvae. Um, really, there are many, many insects that can be eaten. There are a couple of types that we can say in broad categories that are no-nos. Um, anything that is very fuzzy or is red. So that's one way that kind of Mother Nature has told us to not eat those. Um, those are little warning signs to us. So you might be surprised at some of the insects that people are eating. And you'll learn about these in the videos that you're going to watch and also in the PowerPoint that I've put together on this topic. You're going to understand why this practice has evolved. So I said that for some populations it could be a culinary tradition. Uh, and people tell me that they really love the taste of these different kinds of insects. Um, some of them have a very metallic taste, um, according to people who have had them, almost like having um, a piece of liver, um, something that has a lot of zinc and iron in it. Um, some people like them from a textural perspective because they're crunchy. And so in my travels I've seen um, locusts and um, scorpions and things like that that are deep fried and sometimes they'll be battered um, and you know anything fried sounds pretty good for a lot of people 
Um, so they'll use them for culinary reasons. They also use them in medicinal ways. So in Africa, people that might be anemic, sometimes they'll be given termites because they're incredibly high in iron. They're much higher in iron than a similar serving of beef. So there are advantages to these you know, from those perspectives. Um, also, we're going to look at the environmental benefits. So there's a nice NPR segment um, about the environmental impact of a pound of beef or chicken or even the impact of fish and aquaculture on our environment. So you have a couple of videos to watch. Um, this one on edible bugs. Um, and that's almost how could we market this idea? You know, is this something that would ever catch on in the US? Um, and can I eat that? And that's something that you know, modern man doesn't ask too often, but early man did. You know, and we learned about what we could eat through trial and error. If the guy next to you didn't die, then it was probably edible. We're going to um, look at this PowerPoint that I've put together. Um, and there's all kinds of perspectives there um, about why these different foods are eaten and the advantages. That NPR segment um, about meat and the impact. And I don't want you to think I'm pushing a vegetarian agenda here, because I'm not, because insects are not considered vegetarian. Okay? It's just a different form of protein. Now, if questions come up, you can use that um, discussion forum to ask questions if you have trouble with a video um, or anything, the format of the PowerPoint, let me know. So the work to be done for this module, you're going to participate in the discussion according to the guidelines. So make sure that you have posted your initial post by Thursday at midnight and two follow-ups by Sunday. And usually this is a topic that people love. So there's not a whole lot of problem with coming up you know, with different things to talk about. Also, you're going to complete the journal assignment. And that, again, is a pretty fun one. A lot of people enjoy that. And there's an essay. And in this essay that you're going to do for the assignment for the lab, there are some different questions. And I'm looking for you to answer one of these in the essay. Remember to support your ideas with something that maybe came out of one of the videos or out of the PowerPoint. I'm looking for you to support your ideas. All right? If you have questions, let me know in the discussion forum.